I'm Nancy with On Points Tutorials, Tips and Tours. I'm excited to start a whole new series with you. This quilt is a Lone Star. You can see the one behind me is one of the many Lone Stars I've made. Lone Star can also be called a Texas Stars. Sometimes you'll see it called a Bethlehem Star. It is a really traditional, classic quilt. And everybody that makes one, it's that kind of idea that, you know, once you tell people that you're starting to make quilts, oh, will you make me one of those Texas stars? That's what this is. I want to show you a few samples, a couple that I've made, but the first one I want to show you is a historical quilt. It's an antique quilt from my family. This is a quilt that I am told my great aunt Rachel made. And this is a Lone Star sort of, a little bit considered a crazy quilt, if you imagine the idea of making these small diamonds starting with a one inch square of fabric. This quilt was hand pieced and hand quilted, I think probably 110 years ago. So this is one of my prized possessions. This is Aunt Rachel's Lone Star quilt that my mom let me have. My next one is one of the first quilts I ever made, and I decided I wanted to make a Lone Star, don't know what crazy thing I was thinking when I did that, my mom wanted a quilt to hang in a particular place in her house, and she said, well, could you make me one of those Lone Stars? And I was like, sure I can. So I pulled out some magazine somewhere, and I found a pattern, and I used solid fabrics, which is something I rarely ever do anymore, and I made this quilt. So here is a couple of things I learned about this. First, I'm not a big fan of solids. Every mistake you make stands out like a sore thumb. Second, it's never, ever, ever a good idea to hand quilt with invisible thread. I was a beginner. I didn't know anybody. I did it. I learned. I don't do that anymore. This one I took as a class with Jan Krentz. Now, Jan Krentz is from, I believe, the San Diego area. She had come to the local quilt guild here, and I took the Lone Star class with her. It was kind of funny. At the time, I'd already probably made five or six Lone Stars, pretty much thought I knew what, was all was, what it was all about. And Jan taught me a thing or two, and that's one reason you always want to be taking classes. Even if you think you know it all, there is something to be learned in a class. So this was a class from Jan Krentz. She does have a book called Lone Stars and Beyond, and this was the watercolor Lone Star. This is quite different than the other quilts that I've showed you and the quilt that we're going to make because the colors do not rotate around in that perfect circle like the other Lone Stars. This quilt required a lot more fussy cutting to get the diamonds and to get that watercolor effect. Love this quilt. Just finished quilting it so it doesn't have a binding on it. It'll have a binding on it soon. This is an example of one of the Lone Stars that I've made and haven't finished yet. Someday, I'm gonna have that, the setting corner all done. I want it to be hand appliqued, I want it to be fabulous. But in the meantime, it's my example of a larger Lone Star. When we come back, I'm gonna show you the difference between planning a larger Lone Star and smaller Lone Stars. Just like every quilt, you first got to start with your planning phase. So I'm going to take you through the steps that I do for planning the colors, the size, the pattern that I'm going to use for a Lone Star quilt. So in my electric quilt program, which is a quilt designing program, there is a Lone Star. And this is the pattern that I drew out, or the little drawing. So I want to talk to you about repeat or no repeat. Traditional Lone Stars oftentimes repeat the colors. And what I mean by that is if you look at this little drawing, it starts with a red, blue, purple, yellow, and then goes back to purple, red, and blue into the middle. This would be the repeat. It's a wonderful way to do a Lone Star. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. The only thing that I consider when I'm looking at one like this is I only get to use four fabrics. And in my world, if I can use more fabrics, I'm happier. I like using more fabrics. Doesn't mean it's always gonna happen that way, but when I look at a repeating one, it just makes me a little sad to think I'm only gonna use four fabrics. So what I more oftentimes will do is not to repeat. So I colored this one in kind of a rainbow-ish kind of a color. So starting with a red, going to yellow, and all the way down to blue. Looks like a rainbow. 
I love this. You get to use seven different fabrics. Also, what I like about this is when you get the diamond sections done, you can choose to put the blue in the middle or the red in the middle. It gives you more options when it comes to the setting squares and triangles. Now, we'll talk about setting squares and triangles later, but just know that when you do the no repeat method where you're taking one color and going to a totally other color, you have more choices available to you in your um, setting squares and triangles. So the idea is you wanna get yourself a blank chart. So this is a Lone Star printed out of the electric quilt program. That's an idea. There's other ones that can be found, but with this, you have a start for playing with your colors. After you've started playing with your colors, then you're gonna start looking at how you wanna chart your colors. So before I go into this little step, I wanna take you to a couple of little samples here with my diamonds. With this diamond, the purple diamond, you see that I've used only four fabrics going across. So this particular design, this layout, if you will, would be called a four by four. So the idea is you have one, two, three, four going across, and one, two, three, four going down. If given a choice, if this is your first Lone Star, this is the size you wanna make. Making one that is just four by four is gonna be easier, the less seams and less fabric to choose. Now this would be a six by six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then go to the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the cool thing about this is I got to use 11 fabrics. I love it when I can use more fabrics. But this is a harder quilt to make. Not only will I have additional seams, but I had to pick 11 fabrics. And for a lot of people in quilt world, picking four fabrics is just gonna make them uncomfortable. So as you get more and more experienced, more comfortable with your colors, that's when you wanna branch out and do a larger Lone Star. All right, so you've kind of decided what colors, how many colors, that idea. Now we need to chart our Lone Star. This chart is going to do two things. One, it's going to kind of give you a map while you're working on your Lone Star so you don't get lost and confused. And two, it's going to help you decide how much or figure out how much fabric you need. So we're going to start with a piece of paper and a ruler and a good pen. Start by drawing a simple line. Now we're going to draw a 45 degree angle because Lone Stars are done on a 45 degree angle. So here's my 45 degree angle. Using my square ruler, this center diagonal is your 45 degree. Now, because I'm only working on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, I'm gonna draw my diamonds in one inch grid. So one, two, three, Four. So this is my first set. So I am designing what I would consider a beginner Lone Star, a four by four. So that's going to start with four lines, then turn and do the same thing going up the other way. And this time, I'm going to use that power cutting technique. Remember where I add the pieces together to cut? I'm going to do the same thing, but just for drawing. Start at four, three, two, one. So even for drawing, power cutting is going to make it go faster. So now I have a chart. This is a four by four. Now it's a matter of deciding what fabrics I want to use. So I went to my stash and I pulled out some fabrics. So par for the course, I picked one fabric that had a lot of really great colors in it. And then I proceeded to go through my stash and find other fabrics that coordinated. So here you see a nice selections of fabrics that all go with the same fabric. Always using that little palette to choose my colors. Don't have to use this fabric, but I just might. In this case, I love this fabric. I knew I was gonna use it. The, mat the question became, how much of it was I gonna use? So after I chose some fabrics to play with, I cut them into small diamond sections. So by cutting a one inch strip and then cutting those, on the 45 degree angle to get these little one inch diamonds. Now I take my chart and I can start playing. So 
just start playing with your colors. Do I want it to be, start with the yellow point, go to the red, go to the green? So many different options. So here are the couple that I came up with. So on this first option, I did the no repeat method. I started with that beautiful fabric with the multicolors and kind of graduated on down into a dark color like this. Thought it looked really cool. Pretty much thought I had was set. This is kind of a standard pattern. I love the no repeat, lots of fabric. I thought I was set. But then I thought I probably should give you more options. I should show you other ways to look for your fabrics. So then I decided to play. So I started putting some different colors in different combinations. This one I really liked. I liked that that fabric I loved so much was in the middle, which meant I would have more and more and more of it. And then I kind of bled it out. I repeated, but not all the time. Then my fourth one. This was the one I chose. With this, I'm not repeating fabrics. Nobody was more surprised than I was by that. I'm not going to repeat. No, I am going to repeat my fabrics. I started it with the green, yellow, that beautiful multicolored print to a red. And then I repeated the fabrics to the multicolor, the yellow, and the green. That means I'm only using four fabrics. That's a choice I made. The fabrics said, this is what we want to do. So after you've chosen your colors, it's start to time to put down the placement. So you've got your chart. Now I want you to take your chart and label these diamonds, starting with an A. This is the A diamond. This is the first one. The next row is B, and both of these are Bs. Next is C, and there's going to be three Cs, and the center strip is D. In the case of this quilt that I am making, because I am repeating colors, I'm repeating that C. So I'm going to come back to C, B, and A. Now my design is done. I know how many strips I need. So for each one of these letters, I need one strip of fabric. So for my A, I've got one, two A's. So A, I need two strips. For B, one, two, three, four. So B is four. C, one, two, three, four, five, six. And D is just four strips. This is how I'm able to figure out how much fabric I need for my quilt. Now with this quilt, I am planning on cutting the strips two and a half inches wide. So I usually will cut, draw that up here at the top so I don't forget. Two and a half inches wide. So for the A fabric, I need two strips. Two strips times two and a half inches is five inches of fabric, so that would be, I believe, an eighth of a yard of fabric. For the B, I need four strips times two and a half, so 10 inches of fabric, which that's a little bit more than a quarter of a yard, so I'm going to have to get three eighths of a yard. So you understand the idea. Six times two and a half would be 12, and 12 would be a third of a yard of fabric. So that's the idea going through using this charting system. You know how many strips you need. You multiply the number of strips you need by the size strip that you're going to make. So I've got some other examples here. So on this, I did the three by three. So this would be a small Lone Star. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And I used five different fabrics. For A, I need one strip, B, two, C3, D2, E1. Here is a larger one. This would be a five by five. One, two, three, four, five. And I did no repeats on this particular chart. So you can, dis you can understand then how it is you determine how much fabric you need. So this is an important thing to remember. When you're deciding to make a Lone Star, Two and a half strip, two and a half inch wide strips is really kind of standard. It's easy. It makes sense. Going smaller is fine, but of course the piecing is going to be more difficult. If you want to make a large Lone Star, let's say you're wanting to make one for a queen size bed, 
the largest size strip you want to cut is three inches. If you decide that you want to cut a three and a half inch wide strip for your Lone Star, you will have so much wasted fabric. Each strip can get eight three inch diamonds out of it. If you go to three and a half, you're only going to be able to get six strips, six diamonds out of that strip. So you're going to need a whole other strip for those last two diamonds. So it would be my recommendation that your strip size is never bigger than three inches and that for your first Lone Star, make it a four by four. I think you'll find that a doable quilt. Thanks for watching our video. If you like that one, be sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single video. And leave a comment. We would really like to hear from you.